everyone. Today, I want to talk to you about controlling the chaos, balancing the chaos in our life. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lynn Schrader, and I empower busy women, women who are professional, who want to step outside of their comfort zone and to begin leading a life that they could have never imagined, having relationships, building business, you name it. I enjoy empowering women to do that. So back to the subject of controlling the chaos, balancing the chaos. Have you ever felt like your life is out of whack? That you are on a hamster wheel out of control? That you are not only balancing a few plates, you're balancing many plates. That you're not juggling two balls, you're juggling 22 balls. I've been there, I've done that, and if I'm not careful, I will continue to do that. So I have a question for you. When did your life begin to look so different? When did my life begin to look so different? When did I go, when did you go from that carefree little girl who twirled, or maybe the little boy who played with uh, Hot Wheels cars, or really didn't uh, care about anything to being a frenzied student, or mom, or dad, or, or, or husband, or wife? When did we go from that carefree life to this frenzied life? Um, you and I, if we're not careful, we keep adding responsibilities to our already full plate. And we don't stop to question or to evaluate what's on that plate. It's like when we go to a, um, a family reunion or a, a, or a Super Bowl party and we add all kinds of comfort food to our plate because they look so good. But we never think about, about how bad we're gonna feel afterwards. We keep adding responsibilities but we don't take any away. Remember, I've done videos on this subject where we, when we say yes to something, we are saying no to something at the same time. We rush, we feel empty, we feel depleted, we feel a fraction, we feel like a fraction of the person that we are when we continue to add to our plate. Um, when we surrender, when we wave the white flag to the enormity of everyday life, that we just sort of give up, we're just gonna go with the norm, then we forfeit joy, peace, um, happiness, contentment. We even forfeit gratitude because we are so um, overwhelmed that we forget to be grateful. And I'm speaking to myself. We race for some sort of prize, but we're not sure what that prize is going to be. Or we, we race toward this imaginary finish line, and we're not even sure what's there. Society has what, we, what I call, they say it's the norm. Um, that's just how we do it. That kind of mentality creeps in, and we just go with the flow. But our lives are not meant to be so full, to include so much. Reality is that less of certain things can lead to more of what we really want. But society says more, more things are gonna lead to what we really want. But the reality is less of things will lead to more of what we really, really want. Um, the thing about technology and this day, our life, technology does create some ease. If we need an answer, we Google it. If we need um, to balance our checkbook, we do it online and it happens really quick. But it also drains us. It also takes away what used to make, uh, make us happy. So what do we do? What do you and I do? What do I do when I feel this, this, this norm start to creep in? That's just the way we do things. Well, I think one thing that we need to do is we need to question 
just about everything that we're doing. And that's, that's not even about balance or chaos. That's really about everything. We should question ourselves. We should do some introspection. So you need to get curious about why we're doing certain things. What's the motive behind why we are chasing our tail? Why we are wanting more and more and more? Why we are on that ha hamster wheel? What's the motive behind our saying yes to so many things? Friends, you and I can say no. When we're little, when what, if we have had little kids or when we were little, we said no really quickly. Ask a little toddler. It's time to go, or tell a to toddler, it's time to go to bed. No. Uh, tell a toddler, it's time to leave the store. No, I don't want to leave the store. We used to say no quite often, but we don't say no very much anymore. Um, now, this could be controversial, um, but do you, do I really need all the social media? Do we need to be connected to everything out there? Uh, the answer is no, but if you have to use it to promote your business or whatever it might be, maybe you can manage it differently. Maybe you could turn off notice notifications. Maybe you could turn on your do not disturb. Maybe you could schedule out your post so you're not doing it. Uh, maybe you could unsubscribe to things, but the reality is, is we don't need social media, but it can crowd our lives and make it chaotic. Here's another thing we don't need. We can say no to a bazillion extracurricular activities, especially that our kids are in. Now that can be controversial too, because some families do choose to have their kids in multiple sports. Now let me just say something and you can take it one way or the other. I do believe that sports are fantastic. For kids, my own kids were in sports, keeps them out of trouble. It keeps them, uh, they have to play as a team. They have to listen to authority. They have to learn to lose. All of those things are awesome. But when you say yes to multiple extracurricular activities, aren't you saying no to some other great activities that your family could do? That's the only thing I want to say. So you can say no to those things. You can say no to chairing every committee that you get asked to chair. Somebody told me one time that when you step down from a position, you are letting someone else be blessed by that same position. And it's true. Sometimes we don't want to say that we don't want to step away because we feel like we're going to be losing out, but really we're going to be giving somebody else a bunch of blessings. Um, you can say no to cluttering your home with dozens of things from Hobby Lobby. Now I'm talking to myself on that one, but when we say less to things, we actually really say we want more of other things. So cluttering our homes with things that take over our responsibility, now we've got a lot of stuff in our homes, it takes away from the things that we truly, truly need. So. You, you and I can do a couple of things. We can adopt the mantra of Larry the Cable Guy, get her done. We can adrop, uh, adopt the mantra of Rosie the Riveter, we can do it. Remember the lady with her, her muscle up in the air, we can do it, get her done. We can adopt that mantra and think that we're Wonder Women, or we can breathe, we can believe that we're meant for more, we can choose a life of less. We can say no to the world, dictating to us what we should do, how we should be, what we should look like, what we should do. Here's a great activity and then I'll, I'll let you go. So here's a great activity. Draw you as a stick figure. Get a piece of paper and draw a big stick figure and that is you. Doesn't have to be fancy. Now take two crayons or two colored pens or two colored pencils and we're going to I want you to write the things that drain you first and then you're going to write the things that feed you now when you write the things that drain you I want you to write it around the side of your stick figure with an arrow going out what takes from you and kills 
your joy, your gratitude? Is it your job? Is it your, is it social media? Is it all the sports that you have to attend? Is it the toxic friendships, the toxic people in your life? Is it finances? Is it neighbors? Is it the in-laws? Whatever it is, draw arrows out from your stick figure. What is out of whack? What is draining you? What is creating chaos? Now, the second thing you can do is to begin drawing arrows in with another colored pencil of all the things that feed you. Taking a walk, um, reading a book, blogging, traveling, your friends, your husband, your family. Now look, when you're all done, look at your drawing. What are the things that are draining you? Do they outnumber the things that are feeding you? Begin cutting things out that drain you. Remember that slight shifts can make a big change. So here's a quote from an author of a book that I absolutely love, and it's called When Less Becomes More. And she says, what if the scenic route, the route with more twist and turns and time is actually sometimes the better option? So I hope you got some value out of this. Listen, if you are someone who needs encouragement every now and then, but you don't get it, and you are feeling out of whack, you are feeling exhausted, I'm gonna drop the link to some free affirmations that I will send to your inbox from me to you. They're little video affirmations of me telling you just how awesome you are. So click that link. They're free, no strings attached. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, drop a comment below and let me know what you think. So much, thank you so much for watching.